In this video, I will dissolve my gold to make chlorauric acid and reduce it with oxalic acid to form colloidal gold. I will then use this gold to make some cesium auride. As I said in my last video, I wanted to try to make the cesium auride with very fine gold because I think the larger surface area will help with the reaction. To get a fine gold powder, the first step is to dissolve the gold to produce chlorauric acid. I will then reduce the gold with oxalic acid to precipitate a fine gold powder. The first step was to cut the gold bar into smaller pieces to increase the surface area. Because I do not have any nitric acid, I first tried to dissolve the gold in a mixture of concentrated hydrochloric acid and 11% hydrogen peroxide. According to some sources in the internet, this is sufficient to dissolve the gold. Be careful when trying this, the reaction between hydrogen peroxide and hydrochloric acid produces toxic chlorine gas. I heated the mixture for several hours and let it sit for a few days. But only the surface of the gold got eroded. Here you can see the gold after a few days. Besides the rough surface, not a lot of gold got dissolved. It seems that the requirement for this method is that the gold is already in the form of a fine powder. Since the method with the hydrogen peroxide and the hydrochloric acid didn't work, I decided to buy some potassium nitrate as a substitute for the nitric acid. It doesn't really matter if you use nitric acid or a nitrate salt, since the nitrate ion is the important part. Immediately after adding the potassium nitrate to the hot hydrochloric acid, you could see a reaction taking place. The gold dissolved in a few hours. I also threw in the small piece of gold that I got by melting the gold powder that was produced by reacting the cesium auride with water. This is a time lapse of the gold dissolving. You can see the solution changing color as more and more gold gets into solution. After all the gold dissolved, it was time to get it back as a fine powder. I decided to use oxalic acid to reduce the gold. You will need around 1.15 grams of oxalic acid for every 1 gram of gold in your solution. If you still have a lot of nitrate left in your solution, you will need more. When adding the oxalic acid to your solution, you will most likely see that nothing is happening. That's because you have to raise the pH with a base. I used a sodium hydroxide solution and added it carefully to my chlorauric acid. At some point you will see that the solution is changing color and a precipitate is forming. It is important that you don't add too much sodium hydroxide. My mistake was that I kept adding sodium hydroxide. The brown precipitate suddenly turned black. I don't know exactly why, but I decided to keep going and let the gold settle at the bottom of the beaker. Because of its high density, the gold quickly settled at the bottom of the beaker and the liquid can be decanted. The gold can then be washed with distilled water a few times. Since my product was black, I decided to wash it with diluted hydrochloric acid. The acid will really solve some of the gold, but I thought it is worth a try. I was left with a nice brown gold powder, but the yield was, let's say, not perfect. I started with 0.8 grams of gold and I was left with 0.06 grams. So I decided to combine all of my washing solutions and added some hydrochloric acid to get everything back into solution. Whenever you are doing something like this, it is important to keep all of your waste solutions and your solid waste, until you are sure that the process was successful. This way you have a second chance. I again added some oxalic acid to my heated solution and waited until everything was dissolved. I proceeded to add the sodium hydroxide solution. When I noticed the color of the solution changing, I was very careful not to add too much base. At first the solution changed from yellow to almost clear. When adding more hydroxide, you can see the first gold precipitating out of solution.
What I thought is very interesting was the purple-pink color that formed. This color is caused by gold nanoparticles. Depending on the size of these particles, the observed color changes. In the top right corner, you can see different vials with gold nanoparticles of different sizes and their colors. This time, I carefully observed if any more precipitate formed when more hydroxide was added. When I couldn't see any more precipitate forming, I stopped. I again waited for the gold to settle at the bottom of the beaker and decanted all the liquid. I again made sure to collect all the waste liquid. I left it overnight so the very fine gold particles had time to settle at the bottom. The gold was washed with hot distilled water five times and then dried on a hot plate. The product was a nice brown powder. My yield was 0.654 grams. Combined with the gold from the first run, the yield was 0.716 grams. The missing 0.084 grams were collected from the decanted liquid the next day. Now that we have our gold with a very high surface area, it is time to make some cesium alright. So this is the still I'm going to use. And I'm very proud to announce that my glass blowing skills haven't improved in the slightest, so it still looks like crap. But it's a one time use item, so yeah, that's what I'm telling myself. Um, I've also made a small stirring bar. It's just a piece of nail that I sealed in a glass tube. And I can drop it in here to have an option to or to have the capability to steer my cesium gold mixture and as you can see if I drop it in here it's in the vial and then can use a magnet to agitate the gold and after the reaction is done I can just remove it and seal the vial. I'm now going to add the gold powder and then I'm going to heat it in a oven to around 200 degrees C for maybe half an hour, an hour. Then I'm going to fill in the cesium and start the reaction. Here you can see that I added the gold powder and transferred the cesium into my still. I pumped the apparatus down to around 2 pascal while heating it with a torch to desorb any moisture that is left on the glass. I then started the distillation by slowly heating the cesium on the left side. You can see the cesium condensing on the colder areas of the still. After enough cesium to cover the gold was distilled over, I agitated the reaction mixture by moving the stir bar with a magnet. Over the course of an hour, I periodically heated the vial and moved the stir bar. After that, I slowly removed all of the cesium by heating the complete vial until the cesium vaporized. I had to be very gentle when heating the vial, because the mixture tended to bump and carry the product up in my vial. When I was sure that all of the cesium was gone, I stopped. I used the magnet to remove the stir bar so it wouldn't be sealed in the vial. I waited a little bit for the vial to cool down and proceeded to seal it off under vacuum. The location of the seal was reheated slowly with a propane burner to prevent it from cracking when heating it with the propane oxygen flame. The only problem was that some of the product had contaminated the glass at the location where it will be sealed. This can be very annoying because it can prevent you from getting a proper seal depending on the amount and the nature of the contamination. To make sure I would get a good seal, I first heated the location where the seal initially was intended and then proceeded to also melt the glass above to get some uncontaminated glass to fuse together. This makes for a very ugly seal, but it worked. This is the final product. As you can see, the product on the walls looks like the way I would expect. It's a yellow-orange substance but the solid in the vial has a reddish gray appearance. It almost looks like rust. I don't really have an explanation for that. Maybe it's some form of polymorphism. I don't think it's the oxide because none of the cesium in my still oxidized. Or maybe it's a mixture of unreacted gold and cesium all right. 
I will try to recrystallize it with liquid ammonia in the future to see what happens. If anybody got an explanation for the appearance, please write a comment. Also, if you know why my gold precipitate turned black when adding too much sodium hydroxide, I would love to hear it. I also want to thank my first Patreon, Malte. It is awesome to see that there are people that like my videos enough to be willing to support me. Thank you a lot. Other than that, thank you for watching.